Well, hello everybody and welcome back for another tying video. Today we're going to be doing a hare's ear. It's a variation uh, that I have created, very simple variation of a hare's ear in a Euro style. So we're going to be starting it on a size 14 jig style competition hook with a tungsten slotted bead in copper. Uh, this is going to be one of my heavier flies in my box, so it is a 3.2 millimeter bead. This is going to be a point fly most of the time. Uh, this is going to be a, a, a lead fly for me in heavier water types, riffles, runs, uh, deeper water, uh, something that I will, will really use when I need to get down, uh, down near the bottom for the fish. So, all right, we're going to start uh, the first material. Uh, is UTC 70 in tan and uh, I'm just going to start by <clears throat> wrapping a little bit behind the bead and then working down touching turns working down close to the bend of the hook I'm going to break that off and then that'll flatten my throat a little bit and get ready to tie in my tail now for the tail I will be using again uh, some fibers of, of Coke de Leon. Really, anything you want to use for a tail here. Uh, pheasant tail fibers would be great. Uh, I'm going to pull a bunch of fibers off of this, more than I typically would uh, for one of my uh, Euro-style flies. I generally like a pretty thin tail, uh, but because this is a little bit buggier fly, I, I want the tail uh, to maybe be a little longer than I typically would make it, and uh, a little thicker than I would typically make it. That way, it it is a little bit more prominent. So, um, as I tie that in, I take a look. Now that is long. That is a little longer than I want. So I'm gonna bring that back in, and probably make my tail pretty close to the length of the hook, or at least the shank of the hook. All right. Then I'm gonna tie <coughs> my thread up to the bead as I normally like to do. I like to get that uh, Cook de Leon into the slot. It, it helps line the, the bead up that way. I know the beads going the right way. All right, the next material I'm gonna tie in is uh, Sulky Tinsel. And this is a pretty thin diameter. And I'll explain what I'm gonna do with this uh, after I, I uh, well, I'm gonna get it tied in first, but before I use it as the ribbing, uh, I'm, gonna be, I'm gonna be twisting it using hackle pliers to kind of make it more like a, a rope. Uh, you could use wire here, that's fine. If you have a copper wire or a gold wire, uh, that, that's fine too. Uh, I'm just using uh, the sulky tinsel, so I'm just gonna tie that in to get started here. And I'm gonna put, just put it in the material clip and we'll get back to that in, in just a minute. Now, for the next part, when I tie in the body, I'm gonna be using Wopsy Natural Fur. Uh, and this is hair's mask, light hair's mask. So I'm going to take a pinch of this and I'm going to create a thin dubbing noodle. And this is going to form the body of the fly. And again, less is more with your dubbing. You just want to get a nice thin noodle. Keep it nice and thin as you work your way down the thread. All right. And I'm going to tighten up my bobbin so I have more control of the thread. And then I'm going to work my way up the hook shank right up to the bead. And if I've done it correctly, which it looks like I have, I create a nice little taper there. Not not anything uh, too bulky, um, just the same way you would with a waltz worm. All right, so now I'm going to put my thread into the slot of the bead. Again, that kind of locks that bead in. Uh, put my thread over here on the cradle to get that out of the way. And uh, instead of just wrapping um, this uh, tinsel, I'm, I'm going to take my my hackle pliers here, as you can see, and I'm going to just attach that to the tinsel 
I'm going to start to twist it. And it's going <clears> to <throat> create a thinner diameter ribbing. Um, but it's going gonna, it's gonna to wind it up. It's going to cord it up. And it's going to cut into the dubbing a little bit better. It's going to create some, some strength and durability. Now, anytime you're doing ribbing, whether it's wire, thread, uh, or some type of tinsel like I'm using, the purpose of the ribbing is to really reinforce the material. So, uh, as you noticed, I, I turned um, the hair's mass dubbing uh, th this way toward the camera. Um, when I wrap that. So now I'm going to counter wrap. Uh, you always want to counter wrap your ribbing materials. And this is where a rotary tool can come in really handy. Uh, so I'm just going to slowly get that nice and even all the way up to the bead. And then I can let that hang there while I get my bobbin off. Okay. And then here, we can lock that in once, twice, and then one time in front there. All right, so it creates a little bit of flash in this fly that I like because um, there's not a lot of other flash in this fly. But I like that it, it, it cords it up. It makes it a little bit more durable, and I think it, it cuts into that dubbing to give that a little bit of a segmented look. Now you can do this a couple of ways here. You can you can split the thread. Um, if you have a flat thread, uh, you can you can split it with your with your bodkin. Um, I'm not really great at that. Sometimes I can do it. Sometimes I don't. Um, I'm better off just making a a loop, just the way you saw me do there. So um, I'm going to go ahead and hang my bobbin off the cradle and and create a loop. And then I'm going to use my Stonfo uh, tool to help me uh, create the, the squirrel dubbing collar um, that I want. So instead of just dubbing uh, some material onto thread and wrapping it around as a collar, I'm going to create a dubbing loop, and I'll show you what that does. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to use some of this squirrel dubbing, as you can see. Um, it is the SF or SLF dubbing. Uh, it is the spiky squirrel dubbing. And the color I'm using today is natural fox. But I'm not that concerned with the color. You could really use anything here. Uh, I just want something that's going to be uh, kind of spiky and buggy looking. So uh, ice dub would work fine or a, some kind of an ice dub, uh, you know, uh, mixture uh, that you create. But just something that's got... Uh, some substance to it. You don't want to use like a fine dubbing or anything like that here. And um, then what you're going to do is you're just going to start, you're going to put that in to the loop. Okay, and, and, then, and then as that loop opens up and then you pull down on the tool, it, it kind of locks it in there. So uh, I'm just going to get plenty of this material in there. And this looks a little messy, but you'll see what happens here when I start to spin it. All right, so I've got that in there. Um, it's locked in and whoop, now I'm gonna take, uh, take the tool and I'm gonna start to spin it. And you'll start to see it kind of cord up and it'll get all spiky and gnarly and it's kind of the way we want it. And I'm a little uneven there, so I'll just kind of use my thumb and forefinger real gently to kind of try to even it out. Um, but this cording, what it's doing is it's really strengthening it and it, it's kind of making that dubby, dubbing nice and spiky the way I want it. So now I can use this to create a collar. And um, I may not use all of that material, uh, just depending on how much of it I, I, I did, overdid it a little bit for the camera. So I, I don't, I probably won't use all of it. Um, or maybe I will. Yep, I'm going to just use that much of it. I just want to create that, that spikiness there. That buggy collar. All right. And then the same way I did with the tinsel. I'm going to wrap this two wraps behind. One in front. 
And I'm going to come in with my scissors. And snip that out of there. All right. All right, so look around at that. I like the way that looks. To finish this off, <clears throat> just going to take a little bit of UV finish. And I'm just going to apply that to my thread. And I'm going to use my whip finish tool. Do a couple turns here. Four turn whip finish. Tighten that up. And then just to cure that knot, I'll hit it with the infinity light. And there you go. Um, this is a uh, great point fly. Uh, this is a good fly just about anywhere. Uh, I'll often start with this one, especially if I'm in a new river where, uh, you know, I'm not real familiar with the, the insect life. Um, this is a very generic pattern, general pattern that, you know, it's going to work almost like a waltz worm. Uh, it's going to work just about anywhere, uh, especially with that hair's ear color. So uh, hopefully you learned something watching the video. I appreciate you tuning in. Uh, I appreciate you checking out the site, troutstrike.com. Uh, I continue to work to get content out there. I've been a little busy lately, uh, so it's been hard to keep up with it, but um, there's some good content out there. So if you haven't checked out troutstrike.com, I encourage you to do so. Again, the materials are in uh, the description for this fly. And uh, don't forget to subscribe and uh, don't forget.